In this video, we're going to go through quite a few definitions and a few worded questions actually as well on electric field strength. So I've written out this definition already. And in A-level physics, you always want to think of an equation when thinking about definitions. So the most simple equation for field strength is force over charge. So I've written here force per unit charge. And it's always important that you write acting on a positive test charge placed in the field. That's something that I've noticed they look for a lot in mark schemes, which is why I included it. And it's what guarantees that second mark in these questions. This next one mark question, how we know whether e electric field strength is a scalar or vector quantity? Well, whenever you're multiplying or dividing two scalars, you get a scalar. When you're multiplying or dividing two vectors, you get a scalar too. I don't know why I wrote vector there. Sorry about that. Whereas if you're multiplying or dividing a scalar and a vector, you get a vector. In this case, we're doing force, which is a vector, divided by charge, which is actually a scalar. So I mentioned there, when, you, when it's two different types of quantities, a vector and a scalar, that's what gives a vector. So we say that electric field strength is a vector, actually. How I used to remember this is whenever you're doing two of the same types of quantities, it's a scalar. Whenever it's two different types of quantities, that gives you a vector. It tells you there's two point charges, the plus four nanocoulomb, which I'm going to write out one more time, and the minus eight nanocoulomb, which I'm going to write out one more time. It's asking you then to calculate the magnitude of the force exerted by this charge and this charge. Well, because this is a radial field, how we know it's a radial field is, well, if it was a uniform field, there would always be parallel plate capacitors in between them. And that's not the case here. Also, if we're looking at the grand scale of things like planets or point charges, it's always on a radial field. The force or the electrostatic force is given as this equation here on your equation sheet. 1 over 4 pi times E naught. E0 is the permittivity of free space, which I'm just going to write out the value, 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. All of that multiplied by Q1, Q2, which is the two charges involved in this case. That's the first charge of 4 times 10 to the minus 9, which is in coulombs after you convert from nanocoulombs to coulombs. You multiply onto that the second charge, which is minus 8 nanocoulombs, so that's minus 8 times 10 to the power of minus 9. And you divide all of that by the square of the distance between them. Now, hopefully you can see that this distance is 80 millimetres. Because it is in millimetres, you have to divide it by 1,000 or multiply by 10 to the minus 3 to convert into metres first and then square it. You then put all of that into your calculator and you'll get the answer out. So let's do that. On the numerator, we have 4 times 10 to the power of minus 9 multiplied by minus 8 times 10 to the minus 9 all divided by 4 times pi times you know, 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12, all multiplied by the square of 80 times 10 to the minus 3. So let's write that out. And actually, on a calculator, that gives you minus 4.5 times 10 to the minus 5. You may have noticed in the question, it actually just asks for the magnitude, so you can take the size of that, which is what the magnitude is. So you can say that the magnitude is just 4.5 times 10 to the minus 5. You don't need to include the negative. Quite a few students accidentally just use 8 times 10 to the minus 9 as the charge and it ends up giving the actual magnitude, so... But do be wary of it. Sorry, I just really increased the brightness. Determine the distance between the 4 nanocoulomb and the um, 8 nanocoulomb... Sorry, minus 8, where the electric potential is 0. So where is 0 is where the um, charge is 0. Let's think about this mathematically. If we have a positive 4 here, and we have minus 8 here, somewhere in between is 0. It makes sense that it's closer to the 4. And actually, if you split this up into ratios, we see that the total difference in terms of nanocoulombs is 12 nanocoulombs. And that correlates to a difference in length of 80 millimeters. Using that idea, we can find um, how much a distance correlates to 4 nanocoulombs. Uh, because we know it's um, that distance away from 4 nanocoulombs that the 0 appears. How you do that is you divide both sides by 3. 80 divided by 3 is 26.7 millimetres. That means that 26.7 millimetres from um, this charge here, there's 0 nanocoulombs. So the distance from the 4 nanocoulomb charge is 26.7 millimetres. Moving on to C part I, so let's draw two arrows at point P. Um, so I've written quite a lot here, but... Um, to show the magnitudes experienced due to the magnetic fields. Well, this one is double what this is. That's what tells you that um, not only will it experience an attraction there, but it's going to be double the length of the attraction that experiences there. So in terms of your arrows, you want to show that this one is double the length. I would recommend using a ruler. 
that's everything for this question. Um, be sure to leave a like if the video helped and subscribe. I'll post more content like this very soon. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. I hope this video helped. If you have any tutoring inquiries, be sure to visit my website, www.excelleneducation.co.uk. It's on the first link in the description too.